The first F-16 fighter jets from NATO member states have arrived in Ukraine after months of preparations, Blumjerg reported on Wednesday. The deadline for the transfer of the American warplanes was the end of July and was met, according to people familiar with the matter, who spoke under condition of anonymity. The long-awaited move is expected to boost Ukraine's defense capabilities amid Russian attacks. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky had earlier stated that these US-made fourth-generation jets were essential to help Ukrainians push back against Russia's aerial dominance and unblock the skies. Kyiv has been calling for provision of F-16s since the very first year of the full-scale war of invasion unleashed by Russia. The number of F-16s sent to Ukraine is small, Bloomberg quoted an anonymous source as saying. Russia has been preparing for the arrival of the fighter jets, with Moscow targeting a number of Ukrainian military airfields. In July alone, at least three airfields have come under attack, Mirarod and Krivi Rih in central Ukraine and one in southern Odessa region. Russia's military command relies on taking from stocks and upgrading older models of armored fighting vehicles. That's according to Andriy Yusov, a spokesman for the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine's defense ministry, who spoke on the air of the national telethon. As far as defense industrial output production is concerned, objectively the enemy is trying to mobilize as much as possible for such production to sustain the invasion forces. In some areas they have certain achievements and in some they don't. And if we are talking about the production of modern equipment in particular, armored vehicles, here the bid remains on demothballing and modernizing older models, he noted. As for missile production, a certain level of output is maintained, which is a problem for Ukraine thanks to sanctions evasion, including smuggling and other shady schemes, the official noted. As for the situation of the economy and defense production in Russia, sanctions are working, and the sanctions can be different, economic ones introduced by our partners and those in the form of blasts, Yusuf added, hinting at Ukraine's long-range strikes inside Russia. When asked where Russia hides what's left of its Black Sea naval fleet, the spokesman said it was primarily Novorossiysk. They are trying to strengthen the base as much as possible, but not only that. They are regularly engaged in moving and redeploying, noted the representative of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine's defense ministry. Answering the question of whether it took a long time for defense intelligence to identify Russian servicemen responsible for Iskander ballistic strikes targeting Kharkiv and Sumy regions, Yusuf noted that these are always lengthy operations when it comes to identification. This is serious work of intelligence operatives, analysts, etc. All data are extremely important. The enemy must understand that evil will not remain unpunished and anonymous, he said. Russia's largest known military equipment storage facility has been stripped of nearly half of the Soviet-era tanks and armored vehicles that were stored on its grounds before Moscow launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Recently, Russian armed forces deployed a new batch of T-54 tanks from military storage, which were spotted at the Uzanova station on the Paveletsky direction of the Moscow Railway. This deployment reflects Russia's increasing use of older military hardware to continue its conflict in Ukraine, where it has suffered substantial tank losses totaling 2,891 units as of July the 22nd, 2024. These losses have included various modern tank models, leading to the use of T-54 tanks originally developed in 1954. In Ukraine, the T-54 and T-55 tanks have been used in unconventional ways. Rather than serving as traditional battle tanks, the T-55s have primarily been used as 100mm self-propelled guns providing indirect fire support from concealed positions akin to artillery. Nevertheless, these tanks are also being employed to assault Ukrainian positions functioning as both tanks and troop transports in a manner similar to tactics used during the Second World War.